we're going to discuss about Ansible molecule and how you can use molecule to test your Ansible content or Ansible code. How does it work and etc. So from the get-go, I'm going to say right now, this is not a super duper deep dive technical talk. Okay, it's just an introduction. It's for you guys to have an overview of this product, how it works, how can you implement it, what can you do with it, okay? And if you guys have uh, some questions, more deep dive questions about it, I recommend you to check the documentation, the documentation for Ansible Molecule. It's very complete. And also, we can talk after this, this talk here, okay? In more details about the product, all right? So before I begin talking about Ansible, let me talk about what we're going to discuss today. First, how can you test your code and why it is important to test your code? And even more, I'm going to talk about Ansible content, okay? Also, how can you do that? What are the available options for it? How can you test using Molecule? And when to test using Molecule? This is important as well. So first of all, let me present to you guys, let me introduce to you guys. I'm, I'm a Principal Technical Account Manager at Red Hat. I'm based in Brazil, Latin America. And I work with almost a whole portfolio, including Ansible as well. So this is my first time here in Czech Republic and first time in person in DevConf as well. So to me, it's a pleasure to be here to talk to you guys. And to me also, it's a pleasure to have two of the friends that introduced me to the open source and Linux world here watching my presentation. So thank you guys as well. So let's start by talking about why do we need Ansible? So there's a bunch of tools for automation in the market, right? We can quote a lot of them, like Chaff, like Puppet, like SaltStack, like Terraform, et cetera, et cetera. Why people choose Ansible? First of all, because it's simple. It has a human readable language that everyone can learn. And the learning curve is very short. So everyone can start uh, working with Ansible, even if that person doesn't have a previous knowledge in Python, for example, right? So it's very simple to use. It's powerful. The Ansible community, it's very huge from a lot of contributors, not only in the community, but also in the companies from the vendors like Microsoft, Amazon, Cisco, S5, VMware, etc., etc., etc. Also, it's agentless. That means that we don't need a daemon, we don't need a client, because most of these automation tools, they use like a client server model where you need to install a daemon inside a host so that master or the config engine of that tool can manage that host. That's not the case with Ansible. We all know that, right? We use SSH to uh, get into our host and do whatever you want. So Ansible itself has a lot of benefits and these are uh, uh, quite of a short list of the benefits that we can take from using Ansible, like simplifying, streamlining, or configuring management. It's not the focus of Ansible itself, but it can do that as well, okay? We also recommend to use Ansible in day two operations, but it can also be used in day one, okay? It also has an improved efficiency and productivity when used correctly, of course, security, compliance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm not here to do marketing about Ansible. I'm, I'm here to talk about how you can see or perceive these benefits using Ansible. And the answer is quite simple. You need to test to fully realize these benefits. Why? Because you, if you don't test it before you reach your production, you can find yourself in a situation where you're going to deploy something in your production environment that is going to break something, and you don't know why. And you don't know where to start to troubleshoot to understand what caused that. And also, how can you say, for example, to your manager, to your CXO or something, that Ansible is really a good thing, that Ansible has these benefits that we are talking here. So you need to test. And how can you do that? Well, first of all, when you test Ansible, you can show to your user that he can have confidence in using Ansible to automate their workflows, their devices, their machines, their codes, etc., etc., etc. And also, you can test to assure, to assure the user that you are mitigating risks in your environment. Okay? And why I'm talking about user here? Because the majority of people that use Ansible are not developers. Yeah, that's true. We are trying to shift that uh, nowadays, right? Our community is growing by users that are identify themselves as developers, okay? But the majority of users are not developers. They are sysadmins, they are NetOps, SecOps users, and etc. So they need to perceive that. And they need something easy to see 
those results in their environments, okay? So, first, let me ask you this in this audience here. How many of you have successfully implemented Ansible in your environment? You can raise your hand so I can. Ooh, the majority of you, that's good. So, I'm talking to an experienced audience, that's good, okay? But, how many of you have implemented successfully a unit test or a automated test with Ansible? Aha, uh -huh, few of you, right? Let me ask you that, what are you using for that? For example, you here, what are you using for, for that? You don't count, you said molecule, so you're out. <laughs> <laughs> You're experienced. Who else? You. Monica. Oh, so you guys are savvy with this. Yeah. Awesome. That's cool. So you guys perceive the value of using Molecule, right? PyTest, for example. The majority of the people that I talk to, they use PyTest to do those kind of tests. And the good news is that Molecule uses PyTest as well, right? It's very expandable. It's very customizing. Okay? So before we talk about Molecule, what are other options that we have to test Ansible? For example, you could use Ansible Lightspeed. How many of you have heard about Lightspeed here? Good, good. So you know that Lightspeed is a product, right? It's licensed by Red Hat with IBM. So not all of people in the community have access, has access to it, okay? But for the Red Hat users, you could use something like uh, Ansible Lightspeed with the power of intelligent artificial, artificial intelligence, right? To write your code. But the problem with that is that Ansible Lightspeed will not check the outcome of your code. It's going to recommend to you how to write your code. There's a difference here, okay? Another option that you may have is using syntax check. Syntax check may also say to you, look, you need, uh, your identification is wrong, for example, or this module doesn't exist or stuff like that. But again, it's not going to say to you how it's going to behave. What's the outcome of that, okay? Another option is to use Ansible Lint, but it's almost the same thing that do a syntax check. It's only checking your, the structure of your playbook, okay? And finally, you could use Navigator as well. Navigator embeds uh, both the syntax check and Ansible Lint in it. So we're talking about the same thing here. So do you guys perceive that I'm talking about seeing the outcome of your playbooks, of your roles, of your collections. Because only testing if your playbook is idempotent, okay, it's good to check that, but it's not going to say if you use that playbook in your production environment, if it's going to uh, give you the results that you are expecting from that playbook, okay? Let's say that you are implementing, for example, a uh, web application, for example. So your playbook, your playbook should, for example, deploy a virtual machine with a Apache, application with a MySQL backend, for example, and etc. So the, the navigator, the Ansible link, the syntax check, all of them can say to you, okay, you are using the correct modules, you are using uh, an adipotent playbook, and etc. But if you don't put the correct, the correct uh, parameters inside your playbook, it's not going to reach the result that you're going to expect in your production, which is your application for uh, working in your environment, right? So the idea behind Molecule is that you can test that. But when you talk about tests, you also talk about having an environment for you to test, right? Like a sandbox or a dev environment, okay? So that's one of the uh, like issues that Molecule tried to solve, okay? So how can you use Molecule for what kind of scenarios? First of all, you can use Mo uh, Molecule for TDD or testing during development, okay? So, it gives you feedback right away. When you're writing your code, you can use Molecule right away to test if that playbook, that role, or that collection is going to have the outcome that you're expecting from it. Also, you can integrate Molecule with uh, different CI CD tools, like, for example, Travis CI, GitHub Actions, like Jenkins, and other tools, okay? Also, you can use diverse test environments. So let's say, for example, the application that I was talking about using HTTPD, for example, or Apache with MySQL database. You can implement that, you can deploy that using different OSs, right? You can use Ubuntu, you can use Debian, you can use RHEL, you can use Fedora, et cetera, et cetera. So how can you check if your application is going to be deployed correctly in each one of these OSs? 
Also, you can implement them, for example, in AWS, in Azure, in VMware, in KVM. How can you be sure that your application is going to be deployed correctly in all of these platforms? So the idea behind Molecule is also to help you to build this testing environment, ephemeral testing environments, which you can test your application, your playbook, your role, your collection, and see the outcome in each one of these scenarios. Okay? So let's talk about the anatomy of Molecule. So taking your whole workflow, okay, from uh, your writing your code, your playbook, to reaching your production. So we're talking about First, uh, writing your code, then checking the syntax of your playbook. When I talk about code, I'm talking about playbooks, okay? So checking the syntax of, this, of that playbook, then doing unit or functional system tests with these playbooks, then building that. You can use, for example, a custom execution environment for that. You can publish those execution environments in a registry, like, for example, Ansible Hub. Then you can build your testing environment and that in that phase is where Molecule enters. Then after that, you can push that to production and finally deploy in production. So Ansible Molecule is going to take uh, this place in this phase where you can test before reaching your production environment. That's the idea here. So let's talk about now some concepts that surround the use of Molecule. When we talk about Molecule, first of all, we talk about scenario. What is a scenario? Basically, it's uh, what defines your backend, what you're going to use in your backend. For example, the images, the versions that you're going to use, or the OSs that you're going to use, the platform that you're going to use, the drivers, etc. So this is uh, what comprises your scenario. And the scenario also has its phases, okay? So I'm, I'm going to talk that about, uh, in, about that a little later, okay? So MoIQ in its scenario, it's responsible to initiate that scenario for you. Okay, and configures what's necessary, the requirements for that scenario to work. Then you define an ephemeral test environment based on the drivers, for example, and Molecule, it's comprised of different drivers like Podman, Azure, EC2 for Amazon, etc., etc. Uh, the default one is the delegated one. And a cool thing about the delegated one is that if you can't find the scenario that you want or the driver that you want for in a specific case, for example, you can, you can be your own. Okay, you can expand the use of Molecule if you know how to code with Python. Okay, also it creates, destroy, recreate, etc. All these environments for you automatically. Also, you can test not only roles. Uh, if you guys are aware, for example, you guys here in the front that told me that you work with Molecule already, you know that until Molecule Five, if I'm not mistaken, it was only possible for you to test roles, not collections. With Molecule 6, it's now possible to test your collections. That's a good thing, you know? Also, it uh, runs uh, idempotence tests and also syntax checks for you during the, the test phase of your whole scenario, okay? Now, talking about the anatomy, I was saying that a scenario is comprised of different phases, okay? So, the first phase of Molecule is the dependency one. In the dependency one, is going to check, oh, for the dependency, it uses Ansible Galaxy, okay? So it's going to check if the dependencies that you set up for your environment are there. Any collection, any other playbook or role or et cetera, okay? So it checks that for you. Then it creates your environment and this environment can be anything. For example, for the demonstration that I prepared for you, you're going to see that I prepared an environment that simulates a VM but by using containers, okay? So it creates that environment for me, my containers, for example, and then it converges what it does here in the converge part. Basically, it does whatever you need for the environment, like install a package, like configure a tool, like whatever, create a user, it doesn't matter, okay? In this part, the converge, it's exactly what you need to do in, in that environment, what you need to apply in that environment, okay? After that, it verifies, and that's an, impor it's an important part of your uh, uh, scenario, because in the verify part, what it's going to do is to verify if the outcome that you set up here, both in the create and converge phases, it's going to be what you are expecting to be. For example, in my scenario, I'm expected to have, for example, the uh, ATPD package installed in my machine and also initiated, okay? So in the verify part, it's going to verify that. 
is the package installed, it's up and running, the application is responding, the database is accessible, and etc. So all of that is done here in the Vodify. After that, it checks your ID potency, okay? And let me tell you this, guys, please, if possible, stop using command and shell modules, okay? I tell that to all of my customers, please, if you're using command and shell, why are you using Ansible at all, right? Of course, there are scenarios where you don't have options, you, you need to use, but if possible, for you, for you to have ID potency, please use the correct modules, okay? Alexon, I don't have a module for that. Oh, guys, you are savvy. Please, write a module. Help us, please. After that, we have cleanup. In the cleanup phase, it's going to clean up all that you implemented using Converge. And finally, it's going to destroy your environment. The beauty of, of that is that you can run each phase separately, okay? You don't need to run them all at once. You can run only the dependence phase, only the create phase, and you can check each phase of your deployment to check if the outcome is expected, is the way you intend it to be, okay? And also, you can run everything at once. So it's going to create an environment, converge, apply all the configurations that you set up, verify if it's correctly, check the dependency, then clean up and destroy your environment all at once. That's the beauty of it, okay? And also, you don't need to have, for example, access to a fancy lab to do that, okay? You just need to have access to a server or a machine with the proper resources, okay? For Ansible to be able to install these packages, to create those containers and etc. All the rest, it's on the responsibility of Ansible with Molecule to do for you, to create all this environment, to apply all of that, okay? So, you can also expand what Molecule is capable of do and also set up some default values using the molecule YAML file. In this uh, file, you're going to set up, it's your configuration file, and you're going to set up all the default configurations that you want for your environment, okay? And this uh, file, it's available in the main directory of molecule, okay? Which is called default. I'm going to show you that, okay? So now let's go to our demo, and you're going to see that working uh, as a simulation in a laboratory but you are going to have an idea what you are capable to do using Molecule. But please, expand this to any other scenario that you can think of in your own environment, okay? In this scenario that I'm going to show to you, I'm just going to simple install, as I said, a HTTP package in a container simulating a virtual server, and I need that server to be up and running with the package installed, okay? And it's going to be all this automation tasks for me, okay? So let's going to see this. Um, I simulated using Fedora, so you guys can use it as well. I install Molecule using pip install, okay? And you can see here that I have an structure of directories created in, this, in the home directory of my user, as you can see here. And I created this playbook called Prereq Playbook, okay? What it does for me is to create the necessary directories and configurations both in my Ansible config file and also for Molecule. So I created here a directory only to create my custom collection. I'm going to create that. I'm creating is also a custom role, and also I'm creating the Molecule directory, okay? So these are um, the modules that I'm going to use to that. Also, I'm changing my Ansible config to find my custom directory for my collection. This is not mandatory, okay? But just for the demonstration, I did that. Also, I'm going to check if the directory exists or not. Then I'm going to create my collection using Ansible Galaxy collection in it with the name of it and specifying the directory that I just created in the previous step, okay? Then I'm going to initiate my role inside that collection, okay? It's created here. And finally, I'm going to extract a tarball that I just created to facilitate this demonstration, okay? With all the, the necessary uh, playbooks that I need for Molecule. And also, I'm setting up a, a simple task in my role just to install the HTTP package, okay? Simple as that. This is the prerequisite playbook. So I'm going to run it and let it run so we can create my directories and all uh, the necessary packages that I need for this demonstration, okay? Oh, live demo is so hard. So after it finishes, 
you're going to see that it creates for me a directory called devconf.cz and my ansible config file. Okay? And if I check my ansible config file, it has all the necessary information that I need for my collection to work properly, my custom collection. Okay? Also, in the devconf.cz directory, I created, as I said, the role directory and has a task, the main task to install my package, my HTTP package. Okay? And right here, you can do whatever you want your role, with your role. It can be anything. Uh, the good part of, your, of this uh, directory that I created is this one, the extension molecule default one, which holds all the playbooks for each phase that I want to run in my tasks. It's not mandatory that you create all of the phases here, but I, I just selected a few ones so I can use them, okay? Then I changed to the extensions directory, which holds the molecule directory, okay? And inside this directory is where I'm going to run everything I need, okay? For example, if I run the molecule command create inside the molecule directory, you're going to see that it fails like this on purpose. But if I go back to the extension directory, you guys are going to see that if I run the same command, now it's going to work. And this is important, okay? I saw a lot of people uh, open uh, PRs in GitHub. Oh, and molecule's not working because that's the, the reason. You need to be in the extensions directory in order to be able to run. In the create playbook, what I'm doing here is asking to molecule to create my environment. And as you can see here, I specify a requirement environment um, playbook I'm specifying the platform. I'm using Podman for this demonstration with the specific images, okay? UBI images for RHEL 8 and RHEL 9 to simulate different OSs. And as you can see here, there's no container running in my machine. So what I'm going to do is ask to Molecule to create this environment for me, this ephemeral environment, okay? So now it's running. So it does some tests before it start running the create phase. As you can see here, it checks my dependency. It worked, now it's creating my containers and it worked. If now check, you're going to see that my containers were created, okay? But that doesn't mean anything because I just created my containers. I want to have a ATP package installing up and running, okay? So in the verify phase, I'm going to check that. Assert to me that ATP is in fact installed in these containers. So if I run molecule verify now, without doing that, without converge, you guys are going to see that the verify is going to tell me, look, you don't have what's necessary. It fails. Okay? So it, it is telling me that I don't have my package installed. And I can check that, for example, using molecule login, assessing one of the containers, for example, and I'm accessing the UBI 9. And if I check that, you're going to see that there is no package installed, okay? The same thing for the UBI 8 version. There is no package installed there either, as you can see here, okay? So it's just to prove that I didn't implement what I needed. As you can see here, I'm not checking the code itself. I'm checking the outcome of it, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Converge to call my role to execute my role and to install the package that I need using my example web install Apache role. So I'm going to run molecule converge and molecule converge is going to be responsible to access my container images and install that package for me. Before it does that, it also runs the create phase, okay? And also it runs the requirements phase as well, okay? So now it's, it checked that my containers exist and it is installing the Apache package for me. Again, this is just a simple example, but it can be whatever you want, okay? So now that I have my package installed, if I run the molecule login command again and run the rpm-qa, I'm going to find my package is installed. So this is right, okay? The same thing for UBI 8. Okay, just to show you guys that I'm not lying. The packages are there. Now, let's go into run molecule verify again. And let's see the outcome of it. If it's working properly, the outcome of it should be answerable uh, with molecule telling me, look, you have the proper packages installed in two different versions 
of your system, UBI 9 and UBI 8, as you guys are seeing here. So it worked. OK, now let's check our idempotency to see if I'm using the correct modules for this. OK, so you guys are going to see that it runs idempotency directly without any other preview, previous phase. And all assertion, assertions has passed. And now it's checking if I use the correct module to install Apache. And it's saying to me that I did. Kudos for me. Now that I check that I have everything in place and it's working properly, I'm going to destroy this environment. I don't need it anymore. So I'm setting up here all the tasks that I need in order to destroy these containers using Podman as a backend. And through Molecule Destroy, it's going to do that for me without any further interaction of mine. Okay? So it, it is stopping and removing the container. And after it finishes here, you're going to see that there's no container at all. I can check that running Podman PS, for example, to check that. So it finished. I'm going to run Podman PS now, and you guys are going to see that. While it's running, as you see here, I did face by face manually, so you can see that it's possible to do that face by face. But now I want to test the whole thing at once. And how can I do that? I can do that by using Molecule Test. With Molecule Test, it's going to run all of those phases that I just showed to you in that previous slide, okay? The uh, requirements phase, the idempotence phase, the create phase, the, ver the converge phase, the verify phase, finally the destroy phase, okay? All of those, those phases that I set up here, all right? Again, I'm using just of one, two, three, four, six phases. Okay, but you can use others according to your necessity, according to what you want to do. Okay, and also I'm doing here manually so you can see that you can run that into your laptop, for example. And I can show that after this demonstration finishes. I can run that in this laptop here. But also you can integrate that, for example, with, as I said, GitHub Actions, or if you're running AAP, Ansible Automation Platform, you can run this also using Ansible Controller. Another cool thing is that Molecule is embedded in another, another tool that we have, which is called Ansible CodeBot. Anyone here heard about CodeBot before? No? CodeBot, okay. So what CodeBot, and it finishes, okay? I left it running so you can see it finishes correctly. So it deleted everything, it tests everything for me. So uh, I was talking about uh, Ansible CodeBot. Ansible CodeBot is a, a product that aims to help you to check your code, now your actual code, Ansible Playbook, et cetera, into your GitHub repositories. So what it does is to implement this bot that checks everything in your repository and is going to give you recommendations for adjustments to fix, for example, some playbooks that it might not be according to the recommended practice. Okay, and also if it's uh, not according to the outcome that you are expecting from that playbook, because Ansible CodeBot embeds uh, Ansible Molecule in it, so it, it's able to check that for you, and not only able to check but also to open the PRs for you, so you can accept them, and it's going to fix automatically for you. Okay, that's a good thing, right? So I hope I could show you just an overview, just a scratch, okay, of Ansible Molecule is capable of doing. All right, and if you guys have more questions about it, as I said before, there is a, a cool presentation in the Ansible Molecule documentation. You can find it in the main page that's going to show you more details about it, okay? And also, I'm, I'm here available to talk if you guys have more questions. Now, open for you guys. Please. Okay, so you mentioned that I can use Molecule with AAP. Yep. My Ansible Hub? Ansible Hub, yeah. Okay. So in that particular private automation hub, mm -hmm. if I want to run this particular entire test suit. It depends. What, what do you want to do, for example, mm -hmm. in this scenario? It's specifically, what do you want to do in this scenario, for example? I would want to test if it, we have a huge uh, internal team which are using our AP platform, and they are writing all these Ansible playbooks, and there is no test scenario for them. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Okay, so let me tell you this. There, there's a good thing about molecule. I didn't mention here in this presentation because the focus was to show the, to the, the sys admins, the platform guys that you can run it in your laptop. But Red Hat has an idea of, of using Ansible Molecule integrated with Kubernetes, with uh, OpenShift, for example, and AAP. Because the idea is that you integrate Molecule with OpenShift Dev Spaces. And in the OpenShift Dev Spaces, you're going to have what is necessary for you to build those ephemeral environments integrated with Automation Hub and Controller. So the idea is that, you, for example, you have your code in GitHub, for example. You integrate that with Dev Spaces. It's going to check for you all of your playbooks, collections, etc. It's going to trigger uh, in your controller a job template, okay, that is going to run and ask Molecule to create what you need inside OpenShift that's, that using Dev Spaces, or you can do that directly through Dev Spaces using a module for uh, Visual Studio like this, okay. So there is a, a bunch of different scenarios, but the idea is that for this type of environment, you don't need to set up uh, something in your laptop, for example. You can use an existing platform for that, like OpenShift. So that's the idea, okay? Any further questions? Please. Okay, so you mean that uh, you don't want to put all your work inside that, that directory oh, because no, it's, no, no, no. It's, it's okay, but like, is there a way maybe to extract some common patterns and just, just uh, focus on some of the differences in the scenarios or do you have any examples for, for the larger collections being tested with uh, molecule? Yeah? yeah, it makes sense your question. Uh, I cannot give you an example right now, but I can think of something. For example, Jeff Gerling. I think in the Ansible Molecule documentation, he gives an example of doing exactly something like that. I don't have the details now, but we can, we can uh, see it together after this presentation. Because I think it's almost what you're saying right now, using, uh, for example, uh, it don't use exactly the same directory for that, and also it don't use uh, the, the, let's call the structure that is required for Molecule, like I showed you here but it uses a CI tool that does that for him, okay? So I can show you after this presentation and you can tell me if it works or not for you, okay? Please. Yeah, as I said before, Ansible Molecule uses drivers, okay? Each one of these drivers aims to work with a different platform or backend, for example. Uh, let me show you in my machine, for example, uh, with my terminal here. Okay, so if I run Molecule drivers, you're going to see that I have here, just in my machine, drivers for Azure, Container, Docker, EC2, OpenStack Palm, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So uh, I used pip to install Molecule, and you can use pip uh, uh, with the parameter for and specify which driver do you want to install. In my scenario, for example, I use it to install Podman, this one, okay? But you can use the other drivers available for you to create virtual machines in the platform that you want. And also, as I said before, if uh, there is no driver specifically for your scenario, you can create a code that can implement that using Molecule, okay? It has this, it's versatile. 
in terms of what you can do with him. But basically, he has those drivers that you are seeing here that is going to create those VMs for you in the back end that you already have a specified for Molecule to access. For example, VM or, or Amazon, whatever. Okay. Yep, that, yeah, in this case, uh, Vagrant is going to use vir a virtual box, right? Uh, containers, containers does the, this, almost the same thing that a Podman, okay, and Docker, okay. And the other ones are, yeah, basically for cloud providers, yeah. But you can use, as I said before, if you have knowledge to, it's necessary in this case, uh, to build the code for you to be able to use the delegated driver, for example, to access another platform that's not covered here by the default drivers, okay? Anyone else? I'm sorry, we are, we are out of the time. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. So, thank you guys. We can check it out. Thank you.